is the water spokesperson for Federated Farmers and a member of the government's Land and Water Forum, Ian McKenzie. Thanks for joining us. Coming and uh, from a conference in Queenstown is the president of Local Government New Zealand and Hastings District Council, uh, Mia Lawrence Yule. Kia ora, Lawrence. Thanks for joining us this morning. Let me start with you. Uh, John Key says no one owns water, but the councils act like they do, don't they? Uh, well, the, the, the councils have a uh, legislative role to manage water on behalf of all people in New Zealand. Uh, we don't have a view or have any mandate to say who owns the water. That's an issue between um, the Crown and, uh, in fact, iwi. But under legislation, uh, regional councils have um, the legislative role to manage water. Which, which creates some tricky, um, uh, tricky issues, doesn't it? Because by issuing consents, the product from water, for example, bottling it, can be sold on by those people who are doing that bottling. So there are people who are acting as if they own the water. Uh, well, there, there are some people that are using the water. Um, the costs incurred on getting water from A to B, whether it's via irrigation or whether it's for potable water drinking, drinking water, uh, that's, that's what the cost. When people say that you know, counts, uh, people pay for water, they're not actually paying for the water. They're paying for the infrastructure and often um, the purification, etc., that's required before people drink it, not the actual uh, price of the water. It means in some cases, though, that iwi or hapu that have uh, a spring on their land, and we know of one, um, uh, the Portati Springs, uh, Hapu near Whangarei, uh, have a claim at the moment where they're not able to use their, the water that is on their own land, but the water is being bottled and sold on. Does it seem like a fair scenario to you? Well, um, I'm not going to comment on whether that's fair or not. Presumably there are processes um, that, that are being followed to, to redress that. And the issue about ownership and the issue about claims is an issue between the Crown um, and claimant groups. Local Government New Zealand um, has and supports its members as they manage the resource under statute. So how would uh, local authorities be affected if Māori uh, were to be given ownership rights, were to be recognised in this way? Uh, well, that would have to be reflected in legislation of which local authorities operate under. Does it concern you at all? Uh, no, I don't. I, I mean, that's something for the, as I said, the Crown to, to work out and resolve. There are a number of um, already opportunities around New Zealand under treaty settlements where there are co governance and co management arrangements in various parts of New Zealand. So it's workable. Ian, how worried are farmers about this? I, I, I think you've got to go back to the co uh, questions you asked um, Lawrence, uh, and that's uh, what's the current allocation regime? And at the moment, it's a social contract. When you get a get a consent, it's a social contract between the people of New Zealand and it's conditional upon a whole lot of, uh, it's conditional upon the point of take, uh, the, how you use the water, it has a time limit on it and... Um, Does it at, work? At, well, it, it has been working. Now the concern is that it's not working anymore and there's a lot of pressure on regional councils and the government um, to semi-privatise. I mean, I, I have sympathy with um, your questions and, and with um, Māori's concerns about whether water's been privatised by stealth sure, or not. Sure. Because I think there is a degree of that where people who have consents are trying to buy and sell those consents. So it's not really working. You say that there are people uh, who it, are exercising it has, their rights by stealth. That's interesting. Well, well no, the, the, um, there's an inclination to try to do that, but the RMA doesn't support them in doing that. Okay. So, so, I mean, I, I have uh, several water consents to irrigate. Uh, they're specific to the point of take, the point of use and one of them runs out in five years' time, some of them run out in 20 years' time. They've all been allocated on the basis that uh, the effects on the environment are less than minor and uh, that they can be reviewed, that the terms and conditions can be reviewed at any stage during the consents. Now, in the case of the, the spring, I mean, I don't know, yeah. you were talking about, that sounds a little... And there are plenty of cases where, I think in the history of New Zealand, where Murray interests in water have been uh, subjugated and... and but that is a different issue to ownership. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because everyone's focusing on the asset sales um, scenario. At the moment. Yeah. There's actually a much more I, bigger issue at stake here, isn't there? I, I mean, I, I, sympath I sympathise with the Maori's position that they would like clarification on who owns and doesn't own water, or if there is an ownership, why, why, why they're not part of the ownership stake. I, I don't see the asset sale as actually being... Uh, it might be a trigger for that, but I don't see that that's part of the issue of asset sales. Asset sales, they're selling the asset which is the uh, infrastructure to generate the electricity, the consents are still subject to the same social contract with the people of New sure. Zealand and so, can be reviewed. And so the buyer, you buyer needs to be aware of that. Do you see a future where uh, farmers and local authorities will have to go to Māori to get consents to use water? 
I, I, um, I think it's highly likely in some circumstances that Māori will be part of a co-governance um, body who will have a view as to whether the con granting consents ticks all the boxes. Um, it, it, I also have a view that if you actually move to ownership, as your segue suggested, uh, well, well, in fact, the segue talked about two things. One mm. was having a proprietary interest in looking after water, and the other one was ownership, and yep. they're actually different. But if you go to ownership, then I would have thought you probably have to go the whole hog and go to ownership, which is what they have in Australia and parts of America. So and what that, does that mean? Everyone that, owns water? Well, no, that's, that means whoever owns water has private property, absolute, absolute private property rights in the water, which doesn't exist in New Zealand at the moment. So that's interesting. So, you, so we would have to create property rights uh, that could be traded? Yeah. I mean, and, and that's one, uh, that, that is the alternative. Now, at the moment, New Zealand is exploring through the Land and Water Forum. OK, but um, just, we, we do have to wrap up very quickly. So, so there could be property rights traded. Would Māori need to get some sort of allocation? If that. you did that, I, I think it's probably okay. a fair dinkum that Aussie, uh, the Maoris would get an allocation, yeah. What is your greatest fear in uh, this hearing before the Waitangi Tribunal at the moment, Lawrence? Um, I, I haven't got a great deal of fear. I, it's just an issue that's got to be resolved. You know, we have water in New Zealand. It's um, a, a growingly precious commodity and resource. And as a nation, we've got to work out how we best use it. Is and it being well managed at the usage. moment? Lawrence, would you well, say? I believe it is under the current legislation. What are you saying? And I mean, certainly that a lot of people would disagree with Lawrence. You. Yeah, no, I, I think the I, I think actually allocation of water and the ownership of the water is less of an issue than managing the, the water quality issues. And and we haven't been entirely good about doing. So that. Maori could perhaps be better managers of water than lo local authorities. No, do you think? No, I don't think there's any suggestion they necessarily would be. They might have different values which they put on it. But I I think we should be protecting the values that Maori value in water anyway, because we all, I mean, they're the same values that everybody has. We do have to wrap, but just very quickly, what do you think will be the outcome of this Waitangi Tribunal hearing? Uh, no, I really don't have a view on that, because it's something between, as you, Lawrence said, between Crown and Māori. And, and it's complicated. Every year we will have a different, a different position in terms of where they see their stake in water. It is complicated. You're absolutely right about that. And hopefully there'll be some clarification in no time. Thank you so much, uh, Lawrence Yule in Queenstown and Ian McKenzie with me Pleasure. here in the studio from Federated Farmers. I appreciate your time.